Today's guest comes from Northampton, England and is easily one of the country's most exciting and dare I say, dangerous rappers. In his relatively short career, he has made music with Flume, Skepta, Denzel Curry, Brockhampton and Tyler the Creator. All this, mind you, with somebody who grew up with a single mum in a housing estate. From experimental rap to a line of boxer shorts, all the way to performing with a severed head of Boris Johnson. It's none other than Slow Tie. Hello, that, that's a good intro. I like that, it's hard. <laughs> Maybe you could uh, have that every time you enter yeah, a room. Yeah, no, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm here. Yeah. This is what's good. That's my resume. Yeah. That's my LinkedIn yeah, page. Yeah, no, nah, you're right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> you are. <laughs> well, shoot, dude. I think there's no better place to start this interview. Yeah, yeah. Then who the hell is Crack Rabbit? Oh, the Crack Rabbit. The Crack Rabbit represents every addiction in my life, be it with my family, my friends, and the addictions I've had myself. So it's like a metaphor for something I'm always chasing. So, like... The idea of the crack rabbit, which is it doesn't always go back to plan, but is that I'm gonna be like chasing like this love or this thing that's never good for me. And then you manifested it as this really quite haunting image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I personally am having trouble sleeping nah. after seeing. <laughs> He's cute though. He's cute. Yeah, I feel like that's what we always look at people and see the wrong and it's like Really, it's just the surface. He's just trying to get some love. Damn, man. Yeah. That is a strange manifestation. I, I adore it. I think I, I love, applaud it too. Oh, hey. And then the second thing that I wanted to ask, I've had a, tried to have a look at some of your tattoos in the photo shoots, yeah. but you know, usually photo shoots, yeah. it's kind of hard to see. What have you got there? So on my hands, I've got, this means I'm in an organization. Okay, I can't share the organization. <laughs> Because people uh, wouldn't take kindly to them. But then this one is where I'm from. And then that's my postcode. Then four leaf clover for my Irish heritage. And also luck for when I get married. And then the diamonds. So when I, I get to where I dream of being, I can get a big diamond on my pinky and act like a rapper. <laughs> And sip tea, you know what I'm saying? With your fountains yeah, with giraffes in that's, it. Yeah, the, fire, the giraffe is a real thing. I visualise the giraffe. I want my house to have a giraffe, like a stuffed giraffe. And it'd be like, you know, a square face where the world is yours. Like the world on top of its head spinning around and then the water coming out the top. With all that like marble and shit. Man, there's something that I really admire about people who have such a tangible image that they're hey. chasing. I think it's incredible. Is it I, I love that verse. Visualize it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you've got this big mansion and you're just talking about it, I'm like, well, here's a man who knows what he yeah, wants. That's what I want, man. And all my, fa I want it to be like a ranch where everyone in my life that's important to me. We have our own community, self-sustaining. Some people might say it's a cult, but. <laughs> I'm all about that coach shit. You need another finger for the other organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm waiting. And I've saved these ones, man. Oh, man. Plus, you're a planner. That's yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. Well, shoot. So you want this security in your life. And often I find that when people are chasing something where they want to give back so much, yeah, yeah. it comes from a place of where they didn't have too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was wondering if you could take me back to sort of the late 90s, early 1000s, Northampton, a young... A young slow tie, not even yeah, slow yeah. tie at this point. What's growing up like for you? Well, I don't know. I had like my mom, my stepdad, and then I lived with my sister and then my baby brother that passed away. I'm sorry. But I yeah, ain't a bad thing. And then, um, I don't know, it's like me and my sister shared a room. Like, then there was, there was like two rooms in our house, the kitchen, and it was like gradually trying to put all like money into making the house nice so my house in in my estate i always seen it as like it was like yeah yeah they, all my boys would be around mine and shit but a prototype for the yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah like the dream obviously <laughs> but it was like i don't know weird my stepdad he obviously was a dodgy he'd done his thing and then my mom she was always just like stay at home mom for the early like when i was like at eight or whatever and then as it got on she started working and working hard and then just fucking about like football was a big thing for me um playing games just being with my boys fighting like just usual shit really i think growing up 
everyone has it like you just it's just life i don't know and what role is music playing in your life at this point that's like i don't know whether it's like a catalyst or whatever but that's like my my passion it's what i love i love i've always loved music weird music and i've always strived to make weird shit even so, since when you're a child yeah yeah that's like one thing i think that was the only thing and bar football but that's every kid's dream like to just I think music was the thing that I always connected with, so. Wow. Yeah. So, do you remember the first time you ever heard rap? Well, I don't know, because it was always on. Like, it was, uh, I think, my first proper rap was at uh, Dipset. My uncle, he used to play it mad in the car. Other than that, obviously your cliche stuff like Nas, like, Eminem but then I was thinking the other day the album that's my favorite rap album and I've thought about it and it is um Liquid Swords by the Jizza Jizza from Wu-Tang, yeah, from yeah. Wu-Tang. so I think it's always been there and then there's like London Posse and then Dizzy and the streets but that's more alternative and then grime. Saw a photo with Mike, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mike's my boy. That's my brother. That was the, I mean, I, I guess that's a lot of people because obviously I'm not from England. So English rap to me, I get the surface. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're clearly by yeah. profession within the depths. Yeah, 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 yeah. The first time I heard you, it was, it took me straight back to the first time that I had ever heard. I mean, I'm going to name the top of the pile, but you yeah. know, the streets or Disney. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's nice to hear rap and punk together yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's just refreshing but i think that's that i feel i've always connected with the attitude of punk i'll be i think grime is like a rebirth of punk i think it's just a way of life and the way you carry yourself so like mixing the two i like shouting i like i'm a, i'm not so much an angry person but we all have anger in us so it's just my way of expressing how I feel, you know. Do you remember the first time that you expressed it when you first rapped over a beat? Oh, the first, but I don't think it's like finding yourself. So when you start off, you obviously, there's people that you aspire to, to like be like or whatever. That's how you find yourself, by trying out all these styles. Sort of like impressions? Yeah, yeah. But for me, it was like... Everyone in Northampton, it wasn't, I didn't really look to London, I didn't really look to anywhere else. We had like a little grime scene. And I think that was when I first started, like being in school. I think the first time I ever I rapped yeah, was in lower school and it was for class. I wanted to be the president, class president, yeah, for my year or whatever. And I won it, I actually become the class president and I done what is it? Palms are sweaty, knees are weak, arms are heavy, vomit, <laughs> swear yeah, already. Mom's spaghetti. spaghetti is nervous, but on the surface it's, it's calm already. Ready to drop yeah, bombs, like yeah. that, because 8 Mile, me and my cousin got it like on a copy on VHS. Yeah. Like our barber used to sell video, like the cop. he would go to America, get the copy, and then bring it back, and it would be like £2, and you get the VHS. And I remember we went on like a family day out. And it was like at the pub down in Billy Nacco Drum. After that, we went and watched it. And then me and him were just like writing. Like, we was like, this is what, yeah. This is us, yeah. This is us. <laughs> and then, because I just relate, I don't know. I, like, I loved it. And then from that, that is it, really. Did you, when you were writing those raps, did you have images of stardom in your head? Or were you just writing raps? No, just writing raps. I don't think, it's like... It was, I didn't think of it that deep, man. As much as I think I'd like to think, yo, I think at them points in time, you're too young to have that, like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, you just do it. And then, I think when you're older and when you've got stuff, it's quite easy to look back and make a narrative. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I fell in love here, I fell in love yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you're at the point in time, you don't know what the fuck's going <laughs> on. Like, it, even love, you think you're in love and then... It's not love. Like, you don't know what love is. And then when you do get love, you're like, oh, shit, I, I didn't know. I've never felt this. It's like some weird shit. And did you find that with music as well, that you would sort of level up and realise that there was so much more to know? Yeah, I feel like whenever you level, whenever you get to a place of levelling up, I feel like you hit a glass ceiling and it's like you get to a point where you're like, oh man, I can't, it's like you have that doubt in your mind and you're like, I can't do this, it's like, 
And then it's just pushing through and being like, no, no. Then it comes. uh, Because that's something that also struck me about you. And there's a lot of rappers who have this quality or a lot of musicians who have this quality where you've come from Northampton in it's Bush, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Where I imagine the narrative, the cultural narrative going around would be, that's nice that you want to rap, but go be a plumber. How did you personally push past that well like, i try i think you try and live up to everyone else's expectations and it was that uh, i tried going and being a bricky a plasterer like from when i was at 16 i went and done laboring jobs and i just figured it weren't for me i i'd always got easy money doing like the wrong shit and then i was kind of like i would rather either do this and end up dead or in jail or try this. And it was like, even still, when it's the music, you're like, I need money. Money has always been something that has clouded my judgment and the people around me. So I always tried chasing that. And then I got to a point where beer, I was off my head on drugs and I started seeing someone and da da da. And then I didn't have time to come back to Northampton to make m- money because I was just trying to make music. And it was like, with all my, the people I'm making money with, they're like, you can't, I can't be carrying you. And then I just burnt out all my money, got to a place where there was nothing else. I, I couldn't go back and do my hustle because I just weren't with it anymore. And then it was like, this was it. And it, it's like that cliche thing they say, when you're, you need it the most, it happens. And then it's like, then shit just started like boom, shows started coming, people started fucking with it, started going well. And then I'm like, never look back really. There's been times where I'm like, I could go get the easy money, but it's just not, it's not worth it. Just persevere, isn't it? And then in that process, do you remember the first time that you went viral? No, I don't know, like viral. I think it was like jiggle went off. Yeah. I think I dropped jiggle. And it was like, because up first, you're making music and dropping it, and I've always made weird, like, the first shit I was making was weird. And then, like, I dropped that, and it was like, you know when I always think back to it, because I'm like, now I'm like, oh. It's like, you always think, this isn't doing well enough, this isn't doing well enough. But I remember sitting there not getting a thousand, like, it taking a week to get a thousand players or even less, and I was like, We've got a thousand players. I'm like, this is the best fucking feeling. I've made it, man. Yeah, I've made it like a thousand. I, I was like, I can do this. I can do this. And then when it was that like, jiggle went like 100k, and then it kept going up. And like where you feel like, no, it's not gonna go anymore. Then you're like, raw. No, it's like this. And then it was kind of just trying to follow that up, but like just make something good. You know what I mean? And then from that, I think tea and biscuits was there. I mean, the the one that's iconic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. With tea and biscuits, what surprised you about the response? Um, I don't know, cause it was that it, I feel like everyone has this thing where it's the thing you feel the least like. That was for me. I love the tune, but at a point in time, I was like, nah, I don't feel like it's that great. And then everyone's like. This, this is it. I'm like, what is this? What? No, this ain't it, man. That ain't it. And they're like, no, this one, this one. And then even still to this day, people just love it. It's an amazing it, song. I feel, I feel like the more I've like grown, I can see where it is now. It's like just, it's like one of them things, the, state, the opening line's like a statement. And then it just captures the way I was, like my life. So I can really... I relate to it a lot more, but I think when you're just speaking what you see around you, sometimes you're like, fuck, like you want to escape. Like, I've always felt like music is my escape, that like, I can zone into this and take time and like forget about all the bullshit going on. I can put it down and then it's like therapy, relief. And then I feel like sometimes, like even with Northampton's Child on the album, when it's the most that like, relative to you at that point in time, you're like, fuck this. I, like, I didn't want to put that on the album. And then they're the ones that people are like, man, I felt that, well, I was like, fuck. I completely agree. Also, I think the brilliance of TN Biscuits is, for so many people, it's their first impression of you. Yeah, yeah. And the opening lyrics are just 
the some of the strongest first impressions that I've heard in any hey. rap song ever. I mean, coming in with literally the word drug dealer, hey. I just think is but very that's, powerful. I feel like you know what is that like when I wrote it, I remember thinking. How can I, cause it's like one of them, you gotta state who you are, like what you're about. And then it's like, how can I sum it up? And I felt like by saying it, I'm like, this is so dumb. I'm like gonna get locked and my, I'm going to jail. They're gonna start looking into like my bullshit. And I'm like, fuck this. I can't, it's like the stuff you can't say is the stuff you should say. And I think that's what it taught me, like, just say it as, say it as it is rather than like, making it bare, subliminal and fucking, people have got a search for the, it's like straight up. And I always felt as well making music, everyone's said it, like saying it, like going around where it is. And it, I just felt like I've got to be direct and just say it like as simple as I can. And that was, that was it really. I think it's worked for you. Yeah, love, bro. I, I hope it has. Oh, yeah, I think it definitely has, <laughs> man. And then now you've obviously got nothing great about Britain yeah. now, which I must say is one of the greatest rap records of this year. Love, it's bro. It's incredible. Thank you. Yeah, man. I put it up. There's there's a few which I'm holding on a pedestal at the moment. The other one is Rich Brian's The Sailor. Yeah, yeah, and of course, yeah. Igor, which... Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that, I, that that's well. right. I yeah. love that fucking album. That album for me is Puppet. Puppet's the one. Yeah. And it's like how honest he's being on it, man. It's like he's really, it's like maturity. I love that when you see people grow. And especially him, Tyler. That was the first show I ever done a crowd surf. I went to, when they first come to the UK, they done a show in Birmingham. And the only reason, I've never like had gone to shows or anything. And my cousin, who's my manager, his mate, this is my cousin's mate. Did, was, <laughs> yeah. He was like, I got tickets, and then I paid for me and my cousin to go, and we went, and it was just like I, that was the first time I crowd surfed, and I think maybe that inspired me, or I don't know. But then to get to this point where it's like Tyler shouting me and saying, "Yo, I like your voice," and I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> what, what did that feel yeah. like? I feel like it's like as much as it's like the greatest feeling because it's people you admire. Like I, I grew up like without him. No, I don't think there would be the way everything is now. I feel like he was. He's the catalyst for it. He opened the doors. Rap. Yeah, and allowed people to feel free to be themselves. Like, and that's all I strive and stand for. So, it's just the man. I don't know, words can't explain it really. Do you ever stop to recognise how far you've come? I'd, I'd try to, but I haven't had time because then it's like, next minute you're on like a flight, if you're going back and forth to America, then it's like, oh, we're going to Australia and we've done like, I don't know how many tours this year. But going from, my cousin was saying this earlier, we done a show in the Gary Baldy, which is like a, That's a pub in yeah, Northampton North pub. Yeah. And it was like, there was that, like, not even that like, 20 people that like, no one give gave a shit and it was like no one i was like the only rap person i supported this band called burrow and bees and they was like oh we want to put you on or they they want to just play and i was like oh yeah sick and we done it i remember i was like wearing my nike tech track suit with some white nineties. no one was there no one was fucking with it i remember someone left people left and I was like, have a good night as they was leaving. And then to release the album. And as well, I went and watched Skip at Brixton, which I'm now, I've sold, now I sold it out. On my 21st birthday, I went and watched him. Like my ex-girlfriend, she got me the tickets as a present. Went and watched him. Da -da -da. Now he's on the album. Not only that, I played Gary Baldy and he come, and perform, he come out at the Gary Baldy. Then now I'm doing Brixton, which I, it's like everything, it's like life goes in circles. It's like, I believe, not fate, but I believe things lead you to certain places and then you end up doing it all again. And it's just fucked, man. I don't know. Congratulations. Yeah, love, bro. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Man. Well, now that you're at the place where you are, yeah, yeah. And you are slow tie. You are the rapper. You're the guy holding Boris Johnson's head at the yeah, Mercury yeah. Prize. What do you think you would say to young Ty growing up? 
don't do nothing differently <laughs> don't do everything you're doing but then even that you say stuff like that and people go and they change they, yeah. I just think just enjoy everything take it in spend more time taking in all the bullshit and like I'm a firm believer of like suffer <laughs> like suffering without like going through shit you can't ever like enjoy it you can't like without any any bad times there can't be good times because you've never experienced the bad to know what the good is so just like just push on and keep going through the shit until it turns into something good man <laughs> yeah, yeah. wrapping around just gold tooth <laughs> yeah, fuck. yelling to stadiums collaborating with Floyd. yeah but yeah just they just fucking do it and don't be too serious just enjoy it Damn, it's incredible, man. Love well, I think at this point, it might be time to involve just a little bit of creativity. Yeah. So, have you ever drawn? Yeah, I've been, <laughs> I'm not that great. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, all right. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. So, what I'm going to do, because I like drawing, yeah. is we're going to put three minutes on the clock and we're gonna each going to try to draw each other. Yeah. Um, might try to throw you off. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Let's go. Let's right. get it, man. So, you can use any pen you want. Go yeah. crazy. Oh, wow. Oh. Start here. Are right, you ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay, three minutes starting. That is intense, yeah, my man. Let's have a little look. Oh golly, it looks just like me. <laughs> You got the glasses? You got yeah. a little bit in there? I tried, I tried, yeah. but it's hard. I don't know, like, it's hard when you've only got three minutes. Yeah. Good Lord. You've got my nose ring in there. You've got your nice sketchy lines. You've got yeah. my haircut. you got it all. Well, here you are. Young Bro, that man. is hard, fam. <laughs> Fucking up. Young tie. Yeah. Having a look. Sparkle, sparkle. That is sick, bro. Checking it out. Got the, uh, got the crop. You done out the fucking window. <laughs> I'm <laughs> like my one's just like a four year old. <laughs> I tried though, man. I tried. No, 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 it's hard. Drawing's hard, bro. Drawing's harder with a t with a time constraint as well. Well, this show's called Bad Portraits, so the worst the better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't even worry. No, this is sick, bro. Awesome, man. Well, this has been the best, the, the best interview I've ever got. I've enjoyed this so much. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm really flattered. You're really, you're really good, man. Oh, thanks, Ty. Good love, bro. <laughs> Do appreciate it. Well, let's move into the next segment, yeah, yeah. which is called Further Explanation, yeah, yeah, yeah. where I dox you. No, yeah. where I um, bring up <laughs> stuff from online and that I just think yeah, requires yeah. a little bit more explanation. Oh, I, oh. The first one. Like, hello, <laughs> is it me you're looking for? Only you've written, hello, is it Coke you're looking for? Yeah. Only I don't think you've, you're looking for Coke. I think you've the, found Coke. I found Coke. <laughs> I think I was, I was in the hole a long time for this. I, right, this year. Yeah. So I was, uh, the, this was Betty, is my partner. girlfriend. It was her birthday celebration, so we went to this place called The Townhouse, which is like some bougie, like, members only, some weird shit. Very I've swanky. never really experienced much of this until now. Mm. But then we was in there, and there's like all these famous motherfuckers go. Lionel Richie was, I was there, I was drunk out my head. And then I pop my head around and I see Lionel, I was like, I don't ever really get guests, yeah. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, I was like, oh no, no. I think I popped my head around like eight times and I was like, fuck, fuck. I went around, I was like, yo, is this Lionel, is this Lionel? Everyone's like, oh my God, that's Lionel Richie. We are like, oh shit. And then from this, I'm like, how can I do this? How can I do this? Because he has all security around him. And I like walked past, I was like, ah. And at the same time, you know the guy from Boys in the Hood? The main character from Boys in the Hood, I can't remember his name. From the Ice Cube movie? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the, he's the one. He's like the main guy, the one who the story follows throughout, and he's like moved back into his dad's. Uh, but I, anyway, I he was there. Cube, he was yeah. there anyway. <laughs> mm. And then like, I was basically like to Betty, I was like, rrr, rrr, and she was like, do you want to get a picture with him? And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, we can't. Uh, and then she was like, okay, we can. So we walk over. I'm just stood there all quiet, like being like, Ooh, sweating. I don't know. And then she was like, she 
kind of knows his daughter because she lived in LA. Right. So, well, I don't know if she does, but she kind of blagged it. She was like, LA knows. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know your daughter. Da, 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 da. And he's like, Oh, no way. What's Sophia? I think her name is. And then he's like, Oh, and then Betty's like, Should we get a picture to send to her? And then we're like, Yeah. And then I wasn't going to get in the picture. And Betty's like, Come on. You gotta get in. Sophia would love it. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And then next minute we get in the picture and I swear I grabbed him so hard. And then the moment I put my hand, because my hand's around his neck, like I squeezed him in like headlock and his face went. <laughs> and then it was like, he was out, like, boom. But he looked like he was off the shit. He looked like he was like sweating. <laughs> boom, he's wide eyed and he's like someone from when I was little, man, my nan and all that, they always guessed me up, so I was like, Lionel, boom. We're doing it. We're doing it. And then I felt like he was gonna fucking cease and desist me or some shit, but he didn't. <laughs> we're here, we're still alive. That's one hell of a story, man, thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, that was a long story, but. I <laughs> loved it, I loved it. All right, here's the next one. Yeah. You tweeted on August 17th, can't stand bullies. Yeah. Right, this was, yeah, on Twitter, I see, I don't really want to share who, but someone who I've been working with, they basically started trending and people were like, for like some sex tape, but it never happened, there wasn't. So people were just like annihilating the person. And then I was like, it just always referred, like always made me think like everyone will attack like hyenas they all go as a pack and then they start like bam, 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 people that don't even have a point. So at that point I was just pissed and I was like, I can't stand it. I can't stand this. Cause I see that as a form of bullying. And yeah. like, in my life, I've always just felt like, sh like choking out anyone who's ever done that from being little and trying to find myself and people just poking and prodding at me. Then becoming the, uh, the it's switching roles and shit and then just, just the way it's called, just fucking hated it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. So, so just before we dive into the quick questions, there's one thing that I've been dying to ask. Yeah. So British art in general always has this, all the good stuff at least, and I, I'll, I'll just name some very cliched good stuff. Yeah. 1984, Black yeah. Mirror, Jamie Hewlett, even Banksy, always yeah. has this undertone of dystopia that only seems to come out of Britain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And your music gives me the exact same feeling. Love, like The system is against me yeah, yeah. and I've got to fight. Why do you think that is so inherent to British art? I just think it's like everything, the grey, like the grey sky, like it being mainly concrete in all the cities, like, I don't know, just the vibe, I feel, if people are just, there's not like one set thing, I think it's just the environment, that's it, I like, I don't know, it's just a bullshit place really, <laughs> and then like all the stuff that surrounds it, the politics, the people, it's always like, it's just bullshit, man. It's all built on bullshit and the way people are. I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's just, you're a product of your environment and then growing up somewhere, you can only speak on what you see or what's pissed you off. So I feel like, the same thing. And I feel like we all have the thing that we look to other places and can like see why they're so fucked. And I feel like, I feel we've played a part in all that stuff, so that, I don't know. No, I completely yeah. understand. And just before we launch into the questions, on that note of politics, what would you do right now if Boris Johnson came onto TV with a big severed head of slow tie? I would laugh, man. <laughs> I think it would be great. I don't know. I think people don't want to, they only see surface level. Yeah. So people are too dumb to like, think well like they ain't got the mind or they've been too caught up in this everyday way like i go work i do this i go home i watch the news i go to bed i wake up do the same thing they can't ever look for like no deeper meaning it's like people who watch films and they're like oh it was about this and they don't get the whole fucking storyline that's like yeah. trying to tell you something they'll watch the matrix and go oh the code it's all about hackers. 
Yeah, right? It's all about trench yeah, coats. Yeah, like wankers. Yeah. But people just can't see deep enough. They don't look into stuff. I do agree with you. Mm. All right, let's move into the quick ones. I think these will be kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. All right, so quick five. Who was your childhood hero? Steven Gerrard. Of course, football. Hey. No, no. Matt Hay is a fisherman. Why? I love fishing. <laughs> But he was my hero, and he made me like hate anyone who because I I went I was fishing once with my stepdad, and we caught loads of fish, and he was fishing the same lake, hadn't caught anything, and been there days before us. He walked past, asked for a photo, and he took the photo, but he just looked disgusted. Like he didn't stand near me, he didn't give me. I'm a little kid, and he didn't give me no. That wasn't they weren't nothing to me. It was just a cunt. So I think from that point. Didn't really fuck with anyone like that. Don't, don't make your heroes, right? Yeah, but he was my he was on the Discovery Channel. He had a fishing show. Well, he's a shithead. Yeah, fuck yeah, him. fuck him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're watching. Yeah, fuck him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's something that's overrated in your industry? The whole industry. <laughs> just all of it. Yeah, all of it. I feel like people are just fake, and they're like, like I think you. Like people you think are gonna be amazing, they end up being cunts, and that's why you should never meet your idols. You should never idolize anyone anyway. But it's the fishing story. All yeah, it way. is. It is just replays. Yeah, yeah, I need a different different type of instrument. All right, who is somebody who's making stuff who you think you should ha- who you think should have more recognition right now? JPEG Mafia. Of course, I do. Yeah, yeah. he's fucking a genius. He's like production everything. Is, but this is like a thing. Later on in life, people will know. Yeah. It's like them. Because you, you made something with JPEG as well. We have made nothing yet. Yeah. Uh, we've been like, we're just good friends. Right, like, right. And then uh, we're going to make stuff. Yeah. But it's just time. We know, you can't rush greatness. Absolutely. I like that. Love. Cool. Uh, best way to spend 50 bucks? Weed. <laughs> no, nah, anything that just fucks you up and then you have an experience or... If you're not into that stuff, leisure activities. Just a nice massage. Yeah, really. yeah. And massage, I love massages. So Who totally, doesn't? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I think I've had one. I've been getting them because I ain't used to this shit. Recently, I've just been like, book a massage. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Let's get it. And, uh, <laughs> like, I had this masseuse come to the hotel room like two days ago. And she was funny. She just actually was talking the whole time. And at first I was like, why the fuck? I'm trying to relax. And then she was just making me laugh. And I, and I love it. Yeah, massage and stand-up. Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's the best thing ever. Unreal. All right, and then finally finish this sentence. The world would be a better place if everyone just... Shut up. <laughs> Well, I think that's a pretty good note to end this yeah, interview. Yeah, yeah. But before we do, we started this interview talking about tattoos. Yeah. And I was going to say, it'd be an honour to tattoo you. Yeah, I want you to tattoo me, bro. Let's Sorry. fucking get it, cool. man. Is there something in particular that you want? Mm-hmm. I want to see what you've come up with. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. anything? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy, man. It's a memory. It's time for us, bro. Oh, my goodness. I'm overwhelmed by yeah, your voice. Yeah, love. Well, let's get it. All right, sweet. Let's do it. Yeah, let- cool. Thanks so much for watching. That was my interview with Slow Tie. The image that we ended up going with was the portrait of Slow Tie himself. As with most musicians, he was on a pretty tight schedule, so we actually only had time to do half the tattoo. So somewhere out there, there is a Slow Tie running around with half of that portrait on his arm. And I don't know, man. I guess that makes me pretty happy. This has been episode one of Bad Portraits, and there will be many more to come. Catch you then.